Section 19C. Appropriate Working Relationships Require 19.17. Working Relationships. Social interaction that contributes appropriately to unit cohesiveness and effectiveness is encouraged. Military members of all grades must maintain professional relationships with civilian employees and government contractor personnel they work with, supervise, or direct, and must avoid relationships that adversely affect or are perceived to adversely affect morale, discipline, respect for authority, and unit cohesion, or that violate law or regulation. While personal relationships between USAF members are normally matters of individual choice and judgment, they become matters of official concern when they adversely affect or have the reasonable potential to affect the USAF by eroding morale, good order, discipline, respect for authority, unit cohesion, or mission accomplishment. Professional Relationships As stated in AFI 1-1, Appropriate professional relationships are vital to the effective operation of all organizations and to maintaining good order and discipline. The nature of the military mission requires absolute confidence in command and an unhesitating adherence to orders that may result in inconvenience, hardships, and at times, injury or death. This distinction makes the maintenance of professional relationships in the military more critical than in civilian organizations. AFI 36-2909, Air Force Professional Relationships and Conduct, 14th November 2019, establishes responsibilities for maintaining professional relationships, unprofessional relationships. Unprofessional relationships, whether pursued on or off duty, are those relationships that detract from the authority of superiors, or result in, or reasonably create the appearance of, favoritism, misuse of office or position, or the abandonment of organizational goals for personal interests. Once established, unprofessional relationships, such as inappropriate personal relationships and favoritism, do not go unnoticed by other members of a unit and call into question the superior's impartiality toward the subordinate and his or her peers. Unprofessional relationships must be avoided between officers, between enlisted members, between officers and enlisted members, between military personnel and civilian employees or contractor personnel, as well as within and across the military branches. Relationships in which one member exercises supervisory or command authority over another have the potential for becoming unprofessional. Similarly, differences in grade increase the risk that a relationship will be, or will be perceived to be, unprofessional because senior members in military organizations have direct or indirect organizational influence over the duties and careers of junior members. The ability of the senior member to directly or indirectly influence assignments, promotion recommendations, duties, awards, and other privileges and benefits places both the senior member and the junior member in susceptible situations. Fraternization Fraternization is an unprofessional relationship between an officer and enlisted member specifically prohibited by Article 134, Uniform Code of Military Justice. Fraternization exists when a relationship between an officer and an enlisted member puts the enlisted member on terms of military equality with the officer in a way that prejudices good order and discipline in the U.S. Armed Forces or brings discredit upon the U.S. Armed Forces. This custom of the service recognizes that officers will not form personal relationships with enlisted members on terms of military equality, whether on or off duty. Whether a contact or association constitutes fraternization depends on the surrounding circumstances, such as whether the conduct has compromised the chain of command, has resulted in the appearance of partiality, or has otherwise undermined good order, discipline, authority, or morale. The prohibition on fraternization extends beyond organizational and chain of command lines to include members among or across different services. In short, it extends to all officer and enlisted relationships. When fraternization occurs, the officer will be held primarily responsible and is the only member subject to disciplinary action for fraternization under Article 134, UCMJ. However, an enlisted member involved in consensual fraternization is still engaged in an unprofessional relationship and is likewise subject to discipline under Article 92, UCMJ. 19.18. Equal Opportunity 
The USAF Equal Opportunity Program fosters and supports equal opportunity and must be carried out in the day-to-day -day actions of all personnel. The USAF will not tolerate unlawful discrimination, harassment, or reprisal against individuals who engage in protected activity. Airmen must actively make workplace professionalism a top priority and take proactive steps to prevent and eliminate unlawful discriminatory or harassment behavior. Commanders and supervisors are charged with taking immediate and appropriate actions to address inappropriate behaviors or allegations once they are made aware, and are encouraged to consult with their local Equal Opportunity Office before initiating action to resolve such concerns. Refer to AFI 36 to 2710, Equal Opportunity Program, 18th June 2020, for additional information. Note, the Air Force Sexual Harassment Slash Unlawful Discrimination 24 hour hotline 1888-231-4058 is established to ensure USAF personnel can easily and freely report to proper equal opportunity authorities any allegations of sexual harassment or discrimination and provide information on sexual harassment and equal opportunity issues. Equal Opportunity Program Objectives the primary objective of the Equal Opportunity Program is to eradicate unlawful discrimination and foster a positive human relations environment. To this end, Equal Opportunity Offices at every installation stand ready to assist individuals, supervisors, and commanders with eradicating every form of unlawful discrimination and harassment from the workplace. To improve the USAF human relations environment, Equal Opportunity Offices offer an array of counseling, mediation, education, assessment, training, general assistance, and complaint resolution services. Unlawful discrimination. Unlawful discrimination can include the use of disparaging terms regarding an individual's birthplace, ancestry, culture, or the linguistic characteristics common to a specific ethnic group. The use of terms that degrade or connote negative statements pertaining to race, color, religion, national origin, sex, age, genetic information, and mental or physical disability can constitute unlawful discrimination. These terms include insults, printed material, visual material, signs, symbols, posters, or insignia. Unlawful discrimination against military members. Unlawful discrimination against military members includes any unlawful action that denies equal opportunities to persons or groups based on their race, color, religion, national origin, sex, to include gender identity, and sexual orientation. This type of discrimination includes verbal, physical, and nonverbal forms, as well as social media. For military members, unlawful discrimination is unacceptable, on or off base, 24 hours a day. Unlawful discrimination against Department of Defense civilian employees. Unlawful discrimination against civilian employees includes any unlawful employment practice that occurs when an employer fails or refuses to hire or promote, discharges or otherwise discriminates against any individual with respect to compensation, terms, conditions, or privileges of employment, limits, segregates or classifies employees or applicants for employment in a way that deprives or tends to deprive any individual of employment opportunities or otherwise adversely affects his her status as an employee because of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, including sexual harassment, pregnancy, gender identity, sexual orientation, age 40 or older, genetic information, physical or mental disability, or reprisal. 19.19 Harassment Harassment against military members or civilian employees includes any behavior that is unwelcome or offensive to a reasonable person, whether oral, written, or physical, that creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment. Harassment includes use of electronic communications, social media, other forms of communication, and in person. Harassment may include offensive jokes, epithets, ridicule or mockery, insults or put-downs, displays of offensive objects or imagery, stereotyping, intimidating acts, veiled threats of violence, threatening or provoking remarks, racial or other slurs, derogatory remarks about a person's accent, 
or displays of racially offensive symbols. Activities or actions undertaken for a proper military or governmental purpose, such as combat survival training, are not considered harassment. Six distinct forms of harassment. The Air Force Equal Opportunity Program covers six distinct forms of harassment, discriminatory, sexual, bullying, hazing, retaliation, and reprisal. They are briefly described here. Discriminatory harassment. Discriminatory harassment is conduct that is unwelcome based on race, color, religion, sex, including gender identity, national origin, or sexual orientation. Sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is conduct of any deliberate or repeated unwelcome verbal comments or gestures of a sexual nature by any military member or civilian employee. Sexual harassment is conduct that involves unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and deliberate or repeated offensive comments or gestures of a sexual nature when submission to such conduct is made either explicitly or implicitly a term or condition of a person's job, pay, or career. Submission to or rejection of such conduct by a person is used as a basis for career or employment decisions affecting that person. Such conduct has the purpose or effect of unreasonably interfering with an individual's work performance or creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment, and is so severe or pervasive that a reasonable person would perceive, and the victim does perceive, the environment as hostile or offensive. Any person in a supervisory or command position who uses or condones any form of sexual behavior to control, influence, or affect the career, pay, or job of a military member or civilian employee is engaging in sexual harassment. Note, sexual harassment includes use of electronic communications, including social media, other forms of communication, and in person. There is no requirement for concrete psychological harm to the complainant for behavior to constitute sexual harassment. Behavior is sufficient to constitute sexual harassment if it is so severe or pervasive that a reasonable person would perceive, and the complainant does perceive, the environment as hostile or offensive. To demonstrate the severity of sexual harassment violations in the military, in January 2022, President Joseph Biden signed an executive order that establishes sexual harassment as a specific crime under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Bullying a form of harassment that includes acts of aggression by a military member or civilian employee with a nexus to military service, with the intent of harming a service member either physically or psychologically, without a proper military or other governmental purpose. Bullying may involve the singling out of an individual from his or her co-workers, or unit, for ridicule because he or she is considered different, or weak. It often involves an imbalance of power between the aggressor and the victim. Bullying can be conducted through electronic devices or communications, and by other means including social media, as well as in person. Service members may be responsible for an act of bullying even if there was actual or implied consent from the victim and regardless of the grade or rank, status, or service of the victim. Bullying is prohibited in all circumstances and environments, including off-duty or unofficial unit functions and settings. Note, bullying does not include properly directed command or organizational activities that serve a proper military or other governmental purpose, or the requisite training activities required to prepare for these activities, such as command-authorized physical training. Hazing A form of harassment that includes conduct through which military members or civilian employees without a proper military or other governmental purpose but with a nexus to military service, physically or psychologically injure or create a risk of physical or psychological injury to service members for the purpose of initiation into, admission into, affiliation with, change in status or position within, or a condition for continued membership in any military or department of defense. Civilian Organization Hazing can be conducted through the use of electronic devices or communications, and by other means including social media, as well as in person. Service members may be responsible for an act of hazing even if there was actual or implied consent from the victim and regardless of the grade or rank, status, or service of the victim. 
Hazing is prohibited in all circumstances and environments including off-duty or unofficial unit functions and settings. Note, hazing does not include properly directed command or organizational activities that serve a proper military or other governmental purpose or the requisite training activities required to prepare for these activities, such as administrative corrective measures, extra military instruction, or command authorized physical training. Retaliation. Retaliation is taking or threatening to take an adverse personnel action against a person, or wrongfully withholding or threatening to withhold a favorable personnel action with respect to a person, as a result of that person reporting a criminal offense or making a protected communication, or planning to do either. A protected communication is a communication made to a member of Congress or an Inspector General, or to certain other authorities when the communication discloses evidence of a violation of law or regulation, including sexual harassment and unlawful discrimination. A protected communication may also relate to gross mismanagement, fraud, waste, and abuse or a substantial danger to public health and safety. Retaliation is prohibited by Article 132 UCMJ. 19.20 Military Equal Opportunity Complaint Process Only military personnel, their family members, and retirees may file military equal opportunity complaints. To file a complaint, the individual must be the subject of the alleged unlawful discrimination or sexual harassment. Third parties, to include commanders, supervisors, or co-workers, may not file a complaint on behalf of another individual. The Equal Opportunity Office will refer all third-party individuals who are aware of specific allegations of military equal opportunity policy violations to their respective chain of command. The Equal Opportunity Office will not accept military complaints from military members, family members, or retirees if the concerns are related to off-base or Department of Defense civilian employment. Military Informal Complaint Procedures the purpose of the military informal complaint process is to attempt resolution at the lowest possible level. To informally resolve unlawful discrimination and sexual harassment complaints, individuals may orally address or prepare written correspondence to the alleged offender, request intervention by a coworker, opt to use the alternate dispute resolution process, or use the chain of command, such as requesting assistance from the supervisor, first sergeant, or commander. There is no time limit for filing informal complaints and no requirement for commander approval before accepting informal complaints. Military Formal Complaint Procedures The purpose of the military formal complaint process is to enable military members, retirees, and their family members to formally present allegations of unlawful discrimination and sexual harassment to the Equal Opportunity Office with the goal of attempting resolution through a complaint clarification process. The complaint clarification process involves gathering information regarding a formal military complaint or hotline complaint to determine whether a preponderance of evidence exists to demonstrate that unlawful discrimination or harassment occurred. The complaint clarification includes interviewing or taking statements from complainants, potential witnesses, alleged offenders, and anyone else who may have information relevant to the case. The Equal Opportunity Office may use information gathered from other investigations in conjunction with but not in lieu of their own clarification process to establish a preponderance of credible evidence. The clarification results are forwarded to the staff. Judge Advocate for a Legal Sufficiency Review Once the review is complete, the alleged offender's commander receives the complaint for final action, if appropriate. Military formal complaints must be filed within 60 calendar days of the alleged offense. The installation commander may waive the time limits for good cause based on a memorandum with sufficient justification provided by the complainant and submitted through the Equal Opportunity Office. 19.21 Civilian Equal Opportunity Complaint Process Only USAF employees, former employees, and applicants for employment may file civilian equal opportunity complaints. An aggrieved person can file a complaint if discriminated against on the basis of race color, religion, sex, including pregnancy, gender identity, and sexual orientation, national origin, age, 
40 and older, or disability, or if subjected to sexual harassment or retaliated against for opposing discrimination or for participating in the complaint process. Additionally, an employee can file a complaint under Title II of the Public Law 110-233, Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act of 2008, May 21, 2008, which prohibits genetic information discrimination for any aspect of employment, including hiring, firing, pay, job assignment, promotion, layoff, training, fringe benefits, or any other term or condition of employment. To harass or retaliate against a person because of his or her genetic information is illegal under the Genetic Information. Non-Discrimination Act Civilian Informal Complaint Procedures The purpose of the civilian informal complaint process is to provide for the prompt, fair, and impartial processing and resolution of complaints, consistent with legal obligations under Title 29, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 1614, Federal Sector Equal Employment Opportunity, July 1, 2016. The objective is to seek opportunities to resolve issues at the lowest organizational level at the earliest possible time. The Equal Opportunity Office will work with management and the staff judge advocate in an attempt to resolve the complainant's concerns. The Equal Opportunity Office must complete the informal complaint process within 30 calendar days of the complaint being filed unless the complainant grants an extension not to exceed 60 additional calendar days. If the matter is not resolved to the complainant's satisfaction before the end of the authorized period, including extensions, the complainant is issued a notice of right to file a formal complaint. Civilian Formal Complaint Procedures a formal complaint must be filed at the installation where the alleged discrimination occurred. For the complaint to be processed at the formal stage, the initial contact must be within 45 calendar days of the date of the matter alleged to be discriminatory or, in the case of a personnel action, within 45 calendar days of the effective date or when he or she becomes aware of the personnel action. The complaint must describe the actions or practices that form the basis of the complaint that was discussed with the Equal Opportunity Office during the informal complaint process. The complaint must be filed with the Equal Opportunity Director or designee within 15 calendar days of the complainant receiving the notice of right to file a formal complaint. The USAF is required to process civilian formal Equal Opportunity complaints in accordance with Title 29, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 1614, and Equal Employment Opportunity Management Directive 110, August 5, 2015. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission requires federal agencies to discharge certain responsibilities once a civilian formal equal opportunity complaint is filed. The Equal Opportunity Office must process all formal complaints expeditiously and make a determination whether to accept, dismiss, or partially dismiss a complaint or portion of a complaint to allow an investigation to be completed within 180 calendar days from the date filed. 19.22 Sexual Assault Prevention and Response The Sexual Assault Prevention and Response SAPR, Office is responsible for oversight of the Department of Defense Sexual Assault Policy and works hand-in-hand -hand with the services and the civilian community to develop and implement innovative prevention and response programs. Refer to AFI 90 to 6006, Sexual Assault Prevention and Response, SAPR, Program, July 15, 2020, for details regarding the USAF SAP program. Installation Sexual Assault Response Coordinator The Installation Sexual Assault Response Coordinator, SARC, is the single point of contact at an installation or within a geographic area reporting to the installation commander, who oversees sexual assault awareness, prevention, and response training, coordinates medical treatment, including emergency care for sexual assault victims and tracks the services provided to a victim of sexual assault from the initial report through final disposition and resolution. Note, the USAF will identify trained military SARCs, as well as trained civilian SARCs or SAPR victim advocates, SAPVA, for rotational support of global contingency operations and deployments. Normally, each air expeditionary wing will warrant at least one SARC and one SAPVA position. 
Four deployments smaller than an air expeditionary. Force deployed commanders must provide a sexual assault response capability consistent with USAF requirements. Volunteer Victim Advocate Volunteer Victim Advocates, VVA, are military and Department of Defense civilian employees who are selected, trained, and credentialed to provide non-clinical crisis intervention, referral, and ongoing non-clinical support to adult sexual assault victims. The VVA provides information on available options and resources to victims, conducts liaison assistance with other organizations and agencies on victim care matters, and reports directly to the SARC when performing victim advocacy duties. Victims Council The Victims Council, VC, is a military attorney who is authorized to provide independent legal representation to eligible victims of sexual assault, sexual misconduct, stalking, and other similar crimes. A VC's primary responsibility is to their client. The VC has three main roles. 1. Advocate to provide victims zealous advocacy by protecting their rights. 2. Advise to provide legal advice by developing victims' understanding of the often complex investigatory and military justice system. 3. Empower by removing barriers to their full participation in the military justice process. Sexual Assault Sexual assault is criminal conduct that violates the standards the United States of America expects of the men and women serving in the USAF and is inconsistent with our core values of integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Inherent in these core values is respect, self-respect, mutual respect, and respect for the USAF as an institution. Sexual assault is an intentional sexual contact characterized by the use of force, threats, intimidation, abuse of authority, or when the victim does not or cannot consent. The term sexual assault encompasses a range of sexual offenses specifically prohibited by Articles 120, 120b, and 80 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, to include rape, sexual assault, aggravated sexual contact, abusive sexual contact, forcible sodomy, or attempts to commit any of these offenses. Consent Consent is defined as words or overt acts indicating a freely given agreement to the sexual conduct by a competent person. An expression of lack of consent through words or conduct means there is no consent. Lack of verbal or physical resistance or submission resulting from the accused use of force, threat of force, or placing another person in fear, does not constitute consent. A current or previous relationship, or the manner of dress of the person involved with the accused in the sexual conduct at issue, shall not constitute consent. There is no consent where the person is sleeping or incapacitated, such as due to age, alcohol or drugs, or mental incapacity. Response to an allegation of sexual assault Any military member or civilian employee other than those authorized to receive confidential communications or otherwise exempted by law, regulation, or policy, who receives a report of a sexual assault incident about a subordinate in the individual's supervisory chain, will report the matter to the commander, the SARC, and the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. Military members or civilian employees who become aware of a sexual assault incident not involving a subordinate in the supervisory chain are strongly encouraged but not required, to report the incident to the SARC or encourage the victim to do so. 19.23. Sexual Assault Reporting Options The USAF has two reporting options, unrestricted and restricted reporting. The USAF makes every effort to treat victims of sexual assault with dignity and respect, to protect their privacy to the maximum extent of the law, and provide support, advocacy, and care. Regardless of whether the victim elects restricted or unrestricted reporting, confidentiality of medical information will be maintained. Restricted Reports The Department of Defense has directed the implementation of confidentiality in the form of a restricted reporting option that enables eligible victims to report allegations of sexual assault to specified personnel, without triggering an investigation. This reporting option is intended to remove barriers to medical care and support while giving the victim additional time and increased control over the release and management of personal information. Only SARCs, 
SAPR VAs, VVAs, and healthcare personnel may receive restricted reports of sexual assault. If a victim elects this reporting option, a victim may convert a restricted report to an unrestricted report at any time. Chaplains, legal assistance attorneys, and VC entitled to privileged communications will not accept a restricted report of sexual assault. However, in the course of otherwise privileged communications with chaplains, legal assistance attorneys, and VC, a victim may indicate that he or she wishes to file a restricted report. If this occurs, the chaplains, legal assistance attorneys, and VC will facilitate contact with the SARC, SAPVA, or VVA to ensure that a victim is offered SAPR services. Unrestricted Reports Any report of a sexual assault made by the victim through normal reporting channels, including the victim's chain of command, law enforcement, and the Air Force Office of Special Investigations or other criminal investigative services, is considered an unrestricted report. If a victim elects this reporting option, a victim will not be permitted to change from unrestricted to a restricted report. The individual to whom an unrestricted report is made will notify the SARC. Any report of sexual assault made through the SARC, SAPVA, VVA, or healthcare personnel by an individual who elects an unrestricted report and designates so in writing will be forwarded to the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. In cases of an unrestricted report of a sexual assault or information concerning a sexual assault, information concerning the victim and the offense will only be provided to governmental entities or persons with an established official need to know. Those who are deemed to have an official need to know in the USAF to perform their respective duties routinely include law enforcement, commanders, and first sergeants of the victim and the alleged assailant, legal personnel, the SARC, SAPVA, VVA, and healthcare providers, as required. Commanders notified of a sexual assault through an unrestricted report must take immediate steps to ensure the victim's physical safety, emotional security, and medical treatment needs are met and that the Air Force Office of Special Investigations or appropriate criminal investigative agency and SARC are notified. Reporting Eligibility the following individuals are eligible for both the restricted and unrestricted reporting option within the SARC program. Red JF members who were sexual assault victims perpetrated by someone other than the victim's spouse, same-sex domestic partner, and or unmarried intimate partner. Military members who are on Red JF status, but who were sexual assault victims prior to enlistment or commissioning, are eligible to receive SAPR services under either reporting option. Support to a member on Red JF status is available regardless of when or where the sexual assault took place. Service members' dependents, 18 years of age and older, who are eligible for treatment in the military health system at installations in the continental United States and outside of the continental United States, and who were sexual assault victims perpetrated by someone other than the victim's spouse, same-sex domestic partner, and or unmarried intimate partner. Air Force Reserve and Air National Guard members who are sexually assaulted when performing active service and in active duty training. Department of Defense civilian employees will have access to full SAPR services that are offered to service members. This does not include additional medical entitlements or legal services to which they are not already authorized by law or policy. Collateral Misconduct in Sexual Assault Cases an investigation into the facts and circumstances surrounding an alleged sexual assault may produce evidence that the victim engaged in misconduct. Collateral misconduct by a sexual assault victim is a significant barrier to reporting because of the victim's fear of punishment. Some reported sexual assaults involve circumstances where the victim may have engaged in some form of misconduct like underage drinking or other related alcohol offenses, adultery, drug abuse, fraternization, or other violations of instructions or orders. In accordance with the Uniform Code of Military Justice, the Manual for Courts Martial, and USAF instructions, commanders are responsible for addressing misconduct in a manner that is consistent and appropriate to the circumstances. However, Rule for Courts Martial 306 permits superior commanders to withhold disciplinary authority from subordinate commanders for individual cases 
types of cases, or generally. Pursuant to DAFI 51-201, Administration of Military Justice, January 18, 2019, the authority to dispose of collateral misconduct in sexual assault cases is initially reserved to the Special Court Martial Convening Authority. In those cases, the subordinate commander forwards the case file, along with a written recommendation, to the Initial Disposition Authority. The Initial Disposition Authority may dispose of the collateral misconduct himself or herself, or may return the case file to the subordinate commander and permit him or her to take action.